this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Sunday chat today is going to be loosely centred around the expression expect the best, plan for the worst. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about computers. I will have a chat about that at the end. So you can watch your sun normal Sunday Orchid chat and then if you're still interested in that sort of thing you can, uh, it'll be at the end, not at the beginning. People have had enough. I've had enough. So what do I mean? Um, the way I'm going to go about this is I'm just going to pick up some plants and this is the bit I want to try and get over. Don't be in a hurry with your orchids. If you can, There will be times when you just have to, where you've got a limited time to do a set amount of stuff and you've got to get at it. Um, but every now and again, more often than not if possible, take time. Oh, typical, isn't it? <laughs> when I don't want the sun to come out, it does. It's going to get hot in here pretty quick now because it's actually at the time of day when the sun's at its office. It's been cloudy all morning, would you believe? Um, so, you will put some of your orchids in pots. The media will vary. The pots will vary in not only what they're made of, but their size. Yeah? So that, that's a set of variables straight away that could affect the same plant in many different ways. Yeah? Um, and then, like in my case, there's a lot of mounted stuff. Um, they're not all the same. Most of them are on cork bark, not all of them. So, right. Um, I don't want to pick up big stuff, it'll get on, <laughs> it'll get on my nerves. Right, here. This is a little Catlia. Not going to do plant names or anything. What can go wrong? Well, first of all, it's on cork bark that is sturdy, relatively new. It's not showing any signs of breaking down. So that mounts good for some considerable time. The plant is still tied on with fishing line. I don't believe it needs to be. But it has got quite a few aerial roots. Um, and it has quite a small amount of moss. So this can just be left to grow on, which it seems to be doing quite happily. It's bloomed on every growth for some time. The latest growth has come out the front of the plant. Yeah? So it's new roots, most of which have gone backwards and have attached to the mount. Some of them are aerial, not too many, so that's not too bad. Now, I don't know where the next new growth is going to come out, but on the planning, is it predictable? No. All I can say is it's going to come out probably somewhere around the base of this growth. Yeah, this one. But it could come out this side, it come, could come out that side. It's unlikely to come out around the back, but it could. It's not, you can't rule that out. And it could come straight out the front, in which case nearly all the roots are going to be aerial. Is there anything I want to do to try and avoid that? No. Not for the next growth. But the one after, I might have to, depending on where the next one goes. Yeah? Now, problems. I've got some black on a couple of leaves back here. There's the worst one. Should I do anything about that? If you have a look at the size of the pseudo bulb there, that is one of the old seedling pseudo bulbs. That can just come off when I get round to it. I haven't got scissors on me at the moment, so it's not coming off right now. I'll, I won't take the leaf off, I'll take the bulb off. Take it off at the base. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of black on that leaf as well. It's old. Don't know what did it. Could have been sunburn when it was young. But whatever did it, it's long since gone and stopped. Um, but at the top of that pseudo bulb is some black as well. Again, that's quite an old pseudo bulb. Should I be thinking that something's going wrong with this plant? Probably not. Sheaths, yeah? Planning for things going wrong. Where there are sheaths, there are hidey holes for bugs. There is also potential for water get to get in behind them and stay there when it gets cold at night, if it gets cold at night. So, what do I need to do to plan for this? At the moment, absolutely nothing. It's got a sound mount. It's well attached. It doesn't matter if the fishing line breaks or even gets taken off, you know, deliberately. It's fine. 
It's in flower, still got some buds to open. It'll be in flower for some considerable time. What can go wrong? Not much can go wrong with the plant this time of year. Temperatures are going to be suitable, but no cold nights, um, especially as this is attached to the house. It doesn't get cold nights till we get like into November normally. Um, and this has still got some growing to do this year. So I doubt if the new growth will start until after this spike comes off. Sometimes they do, but a lot of the time there's a little gap. The blooms finish, spike comes off, little gap, new growth springs out. That's, that's, that's a normal process. Um, and then obviously that new growth has got to mature before it will bloom again. So plans for that? Nothing. Things that can go wrong are not the plant, they're me. So if I got incapacitated or suddenly had to go away, spur of the moment, um, for days, lack of water, it's on a mount. Yeah? It'll last a while on its own resources before it even starts to shrivel. And it'll still last a while longer after that. But if it shrivels too much, it won't plump up again. So there's a limit. I suspect, even though that's on a mount, that would go a week. As long as it was in moist air as well. If it was in drier air, not as long. So, no plans for that. Just, just let it do its thing, as it's doing. That's a mount on cork. Let's find one that's not on cork. Uh, he says that's going to be fun, isn't it? Is that one? Yeah. Now that's a little tiny, it's not A, those are two little tiny pieces of Oncidium Twinkle yellow that broke off when I last repotted it. Well what happened was I had some dodgy bulbs that I wanted out, they just didn't look right. So as I repotted it I thought right those are coming off and it left the plant in pieces. So the biggest piece went in a pot and the two little tiny pieces went on a mount. Now that is not cork bark. To tell you the truth, I don't even know what type of bark it is. Um, a piece from somewhere. I got a feeling what it was, was um, when I was working on the um, rental cars, um, the council were cutting down some trees on the side of the road. And the one that they just cut down was quite a large hawthorn um, that had something, it had a problem with it, some sort of disease or something in the leaves in the top area sort of thing. The trunk looked okay and they just cut the trunk up into pieces about two foot long and I said Are those going in the shredder they said they're not going in our shredder because we've only got the small unit they will when they get back and then they go into bark mulch for for our flower beds around the town. Oh, okay can you spare one? He said well yeah help yourself what do you want that for? I said, quite honestly, you, you're going to laugh. I want it as a scratching post for the cats, because at the moment they scratch the shed door. Oh, the bloke laughed. Anyway, I got that. And after a while, the bark did start to separate from the log. And so I took it off. And that's what I think that is. I think it's a piece of hawthorn. It's very sound at the moment. Very, very firm and sound. So there's no sign of rotting or anything. Um, the roots on the Oncidium have attached, therefore they don't object to that type of bark. That's a telltale sign. If you start chopping and changing bark and gathering bits in the forest and stuff like that, you take your chances because there is some bark that has toxic things in it when it's wet. Yeah? Um, acacia, acacia, I think, is one. But there are types of wood that are no good. They just don't work. Red oak is one, I think, and that, that comes from Rick's days when Rick was trying different things. So there are some that don't work. Cork bark works. <laughs> that was a risk. But the plant's okay. Um, do I need to worry about that? No. That's got quite a larger portion of moss on it for the size of the plant. And I found on the mounts that the moss doesn't really break down like it does in pots. It gets old and it gets tired, but it doesn't break down and turn ridiculously acidic. And the reason is, it dries out. It spends more time dry than it does wet. It doesn't get chance to become that soggy, stagnant, acidic 
thing that it can do. So the moss, I don't think I've ever replaced the moss on a mount. And some of my orchids have been on mounts four years, five years. I don't replace it. I top it up now and again because <laughs> it just seems to gradually disintegrate over the years and bits fall off as you water um, depending on where the ties are. Um, yeah, so I haven't got any worries about that. It's got plenty of room to grow, which it is doing. I mean, it's got a nice large new growth coming up on this piece and a new growth coming up on this piece. So one new growth at the bottom of the top plant and one new growth at the top of the bottom plant. They're right next to each other. So um, it's, it'll be okay, it'll be fine. Things that can go wrong with that, staying dry too long. Nothing much else. Well, that's not uncorked bark. That bark will eventually go. The bark that's most likely to go soonest is this stuff up here, if I can get one down. I'll have to go around, I can't see what I'm doing here. <laughs> Trouble is, when you've got them double deckered, one on top of the other, you should always take the top one down first. Because if you take the bottom one down first, chances are you will unhook the top one and it will fall because you've got your hands on the bottom one. So if you double decker. Right, this is a recovering Tolumnia. And it is recovering quite nicely. It does have a nice strong new growth coming up at the moment. This is a small Tolumnia. I don't think it's ever going to grow large. It just isn't one of those. The oldest part of the plant has got the worst of the colouring on it. That's from last year. The newer part, as you can see, has got a lot more green on it than it had before. It's growing some new roots. Um, they're going through and out the back of the mount. <laughs> so they found a hole in the bark. Um, but yeah, the bark's good and um, there's not too much moss on there and the roots are attaching to the bark so that can just go on doing its thing. That one, I'll put that back in a minute because that's, um, I was getting that one down really to get it the other one and then lost track of what I was doing. Ugh. Right, now this is oak bark. English oak bark collected from the forest from fallen trees and when you go and do that when the tree hasn't long come down normally in a storm or something like that you won't get the bark off <laughs> you would need chisels and hammers and all sorts to try and lever it off it's really on there and if you can get hold of it and take it off quite easily it's already starting to rot there's a period in between, which is probably a couple of years, where it's quite difficult to get off, but it will come off without any special tools or saws or anything like that. Um, and that's how I got this. Now that's a long time ago. Now this is quite thin bark compared with some other stuff. Yeah? And I love it for these small plants because a, a, a piece of bark nearly an inch thick looks incredibly clumsy for the size of the plant. But this is going to rot. I don't know how much longer it's got. So planning for the future, it's going to have to come off of that mount eventually, isn't it? And all those lovely attached roots may well be lost. It depends how rotten I let the mount get. <laughs> because sometimes a rotten piece of wood almost falls apart and it doesn't tear the roots, if you know what I mean. Um, that's just started a new growth at the base, which is good. It's also got some scale down there. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to get a spray round soon. I have noticed a couple. But very few this year. That's got very, very small amounts of moss. There's no point in even worrying about the amount of moss that's on there. It's tiny. And there's more roots not in the moss than in it. So even if that moss did go funny, it's not going to take the root system out. It'll only take a couple. So nothing to worry about that, apart from uh, possibly dealing with some scale. It's just on that one little tiny leaf. Still, if they're there, they're there. What I do initially is I keep a, a spray with some rubbing alcohol in. And if I, can, if I can see a few scale, they just get sprayed with that. The idea being that, in theory, that should now evaporate so fast it'll dehydrate them and kill them. But it doesn't always work 100%. Um, and I'm sure at times it doesn't do the plant any good. If that was a delicate new growth, you could actually dehydrate that as well 
you know. So you've got to go steady using that stuff. I'll pull these back in a minute when I've finished. Right, so that's so. We've had a look at cork bark mounts and we've had a look at other types of wood. Um, other problems you can get on a mount. Oh. Size. Yeah? Now this was a relatively small plant when I got it and it's decided to go mad. Well that's good, but it's going mad on the mount. Now it's going mad with the roots, again it's finding, they're finding their way around the back of the mount, down the sides here into crevices. Um, it's grown a lot of new roots with these new growths this year. Many of which, some of which are going upwards where there is no moss. Um, some are going out the sides and again round here where there is no moss. There's quite a large amount of moss on here and a lot of the roots are heading towards it so they're happy with it. Yeah? Otherwise they'd stop growing, they wouldn't, they'd, they'd object to, the, to their uh, media. A couple of tatty ones hanging out the bottom, those are old ones that were already there but some of the new ones have gone down and come out the bottom. That's on a piece of cork, relatively new cork. There's nothing wrong with the mount but if we've had one, two, three, f four or five new growths heading up to this sort of size and still growing, it's a nobly type, by the way, um, you know, what's it going to do next year? Is it going to outgrow the mount? Now it's quite a compact base at the moment. But another year's time, that's going to be heading towards the edge of the mount. It's not going to grow up the mount or down the mount. It's going to grow away from it and sideways, so that the base remains constant around the bottom. That's what it's going to do. So, longer term plan for that, what do I do? Do I unmount it, put it on a bigger one? Unmount it, put it in a pot? These are all the sorts of choices. But at some point, it's probably going to have to come off of that mount. I'm hoping it'll, it can stay on there for some time. It just depends on its growth. Some orchids, caned type, pseudo type, type orchids, they have a rate of growth that doesn't increase too much. So like if they grew three new growths this year, next year they might grow three or four. But there are some that grow two this year, three the following year, and six or seven the following year. They just go mad. Their strength increases exponentially. That's a big word. Um, so, yeah, long-term plans for that, nothing at all. But I will have to keep my eye on its size. It's happy on its mount, no problems with that. Ah. But there is a problem with putting big stuff on a mount. They can outgrow it. Now, this is a new one, and it's something slightly different. This is my Lindley eye. Now, is there anything wrong with this plant? Well, superficially, no. But what I did with this one, the front of the cork bark was starting to look a bit crumbly, and I wasn't too happy with it. Plus, it was far too gnarly, really, for what I wanted. So I put it on the back, which is a relatively smoother surface, and the curve goes the other way. So it tends to sort of contain the plant better. <laughs> hopefully stopping it going off the edges. It's going to go off, it will leave the mount eventually, but not this year. So we've had our flowers, which were unexpected, because we never expected that to bloom. It lost a new growth coming out in this direction last year, yeah? So during the growing season last year. The new growths came out at this end of the plant. It's now June and there is not a sign of a new growth on that plant yet. Not one. So has it got a problem? And I can take a guess at what the problem is with this. Given it was a relatively small plant, hadn't long established itself, didn't have a well established root system, and it bloomed its head off. It's drained the plant. So it's going to take longer to get going again. Not to worry, we enjoyed the blooms. <laughs> but yeah, don't always think that you have to put your plant on the front of cork bark. It can go on the back. Um, so we have no new growths on this. This has been grown on for a seedling, from a seedling, little tiny seedling bulbs here. Seedling bulbs here. They've gone out in all directions. It's been planted back to front. 
Yeah? Under normal circumstances, the seedling bulbs, when something's growing on a branch or a trunk, are the start of the plant. The bigger, more mature ones are around the outside of it. Yeah? They leave the little ones behind, trapped in the middle. So the plant's back to front. That's not a problem either. <laughs> it just went on there better at the time. But it grew quite a few good new roots last year that came down through the moss and attached quite nicely down the bottom here. There's a couple of active root tips here, here, the new one coming here, but not much. And there's some at the top of the mount that have grown upwards. So like here, yeah, and up here on the top. So the roots are growing, but not vigorously. The plant is not growing at all. I don't consider it a problem yet, but I've got my eye on it, because it should be growing by now. I know it's difficult to get your head round it, but we're coming up to Midsummer's Day, soon. That's not the middle of the growing season here in the UK. Just because it's the longest day, it ain't the, <laughs> it's not the middle of the growing season. It's really just over a third of the way through, yeah? The season starts late, um, and depending on what's going on with the weather, especially in February and March, the weather can have a dramatic effect and it can delay the start of, a, of the main growing season in the UK by two, even three weeks. Sometimes even more if it's cold as well as dull. Yeah, it just takes a while to get going. Um, and plants go into growth mode relatively slowly. They start and then they get going. And most of the vigorous growing tends to be done from Midsummer's Day onwards, really. They get going up to that point, and then they keep going heavier and stronger uh, as the year goes on. Not all, but I've got a fair few that do exactly that. Right, other things. Holy clay pot. Um, next. Uh, let's pick this one up. Because there is a potential problem with this plant. This is my Encyclia cordigera, Siang Yu, and it's deciding to grow. So we've got new growths coming out, a couple round that side, got some round this side. So it's coming into growth. What's that all about? And that. They're not the first. You'll see stumps in places on here where pseudobulbs, like there, pseudobulb had to be cut off because it was rotting. Now these aren't rotting, but why are they turning dark brown? They're rock hard. There's no rot there at all. So as long as they stay like that, they can stay, but they're not right. And then if you have a look at the, um, the new growths, all of the shapes on that growth are tinged with black on the outside. The growth's not rotting. In fact, it's not even black, it's purple. And if you look at this new growth here, this one's pushing on, that hasn't got those purpley signs. But around that side, it's got a black mark on there. So is this plant fine? The answer is no, it's not. It's difficult to say what's wrong with it, but something's not right. Um, how am I going to do anything about it? At the moment, no. Nothing at all. When you get things like that, that's worrying. Yeah, That patterning on there is not natural. So what was that? Was that some bugs got at it when the leaf was younger and the marks have grown with the leaf? I can't remember. <laughs> it's another thing, you know, take pictures frequently. You know, if I had a picture of this every month of going back, I could see when that might have appeared. Did it grow with it as it was a young leaf? So this plant is not happy, but it's growing. I mean, it's got active roots coming out of the pot, and a lot of the older roots are starting to shoot out. It's got growing roots up in the pot. Um, plans for that keep a close eye on these two bulbs 
because if there's any signs of sogginess whatsoever they will have to come off at the base with a sharp sterilized knife and the wound would have to be sealed with cinnamon. There's something fundamentally, some fundamentally got into the base of that plant and it's just going to keep doing this. Eventually there'll be more loss to the plant than there is gain and it will go down. So it's not a happy plant and I'm at a loss why. Um, could have Fusarium I suppose, although it got treated with all the others when I did the last programme of treatments, which should have sorted it out. Anyway, plans for that? Keep my eye on it. A closer eye than some other stuff. So when I'm watering my holy clay pots and I'm in a hurry, I'll stop hurrying when I get to this one and have a closer look, because I need to keep my eye on those two bulbs and make sure they don't go soggy. Would a sensible person take them off anyway? Probably yes. Can I be bothered at the moment? No. <laughs> I'm in the middle of filming at the moment, so nothing else is going to get done. Um, right, so that's that one. So as far as holy clay pots are concerned, um, like this one. This is allegedly a very vigorous um, type. Uh, this is the Chantilly Lace. And as a consequence, for the size of that cattleya, that's much, much too big. The pot's far too big, twice as big as it should be. But if it's going to be vigorous, it's going to fill the pot quicker than normal. So I'm happy to have it in a larger pot. And I think at the time I'd run out of small ones with holes in. <laughs> so there's another reason. But we've got two new growths on here that so far have not produced any new roots. Some of the older roots are branching down in the pot. You might not be able to see that, but we've got older roots near the end of my thumb, just there somewhere, that are starting to grow in the pot. So that's older roots shooting out in places. So um, I'm expecting this to, to grow on, um, but it might not do it this year. All it might do this year is those two. Yeah? And, ho and some roots to go with them. But I haven't had this long, so I don't know when the new roots are going to come. I took a risk repotting it when I did. Those two growths might not push out any roots until after the growths have matured, in which case it's got to survive on its old roots, some of which are growing. So although it was a risk, in this case it worked. If all of those old roots have failed, it would now be living off none, because there's no new ones coming yet. So long-term plans any different for that one, apart from uh, hoping it will do more than just grow two new growths. But I don't suspect it will, not this year. <coughs> it is a nice one. You'd have a job to get a better root system. That's a root system and a half, which is brilliant. Except for the fact that the next lot of roots this is going to grow are not going to be in here. So this now has quite a short-term problem, yeah? The growth here that's got the massive blooms on, um, it's just poked me in the eye. Um, the next growth on that will probably get its roots down into the pot. But as you can see with this one, the roots are already not going in the pot and the next growth, the next extension on here is gonna be completely outside the pot. So I've gotta do something with this. And I haven't made my mind up yet, but I think this pot will consist, down the line, not now, will consist of the old bulb here, this bulb here, this one that's in bloom now, and the subsequent new growth wherever it comes out. And that's, that's that part of the plant's future. Over this side of the plant, a new plant will be started from here, which will consist of one old bulb, and the latest mature growth and the start of a new growth. So it won't actually have three bulbs, but it'll be working on the third. And you can see that new growths come out before the bulb matures. So it won't have to spend long on the roots it's got. Yeah? So this will be two plants. So there is already a plan for that one. Um, its root system is vigorous. 
very vigorous, surprisingly so, quite honestly. But it's, it's one of the climbers, it's one of the Oncidium types that loves to get away. Loves to get away from whatever it's on, whether it's on a trunk or whatever. There is one. This is starting to look a little tatty. Am I bothered? Of course not. It's a twinkle. This is the red fantasy. <laughs> I know nearly all my plants off by heart now because I've had to recreate my notes. So I'm right there, you know, as far as the plant look and name is concerned. But this is a typical Oncidium that um, after the, uh, you've got a new growth that matures and blooms and then pushes out some one or more new growths so the natural progression. So eventually you've got new growths coming out on the previous growth that's attached to the growth before. That oldest one there is about the point it'll think about dropping its leaves and that's where I am with quite a few of the bulbs on here. You know, I mean, some of the little bulbs down here, are that little yellow one in there. I mean, that's a really old bulb on there. So we're getting to the stage now where some of the older leaves are starting to drop. And at the time they decide to do that, they look quite manky. But I know they're not going to be there that much longer. And they're going to be replaced by rather a lot of new growths. Um, if you just come along the top of the plant here... Uh, am I on camera? Just about. One, two, three, four, five. Just there. Five new growths in a long line, right along the top of the plant. The next set of new growths, after they've matured and bloomed, will be right on the top of the mount. Almost sitting on top of it, I suspect. And then coming down the side here, we've got another one, two, three there. There's ones coming out the bottom here in the middle of the plant. Everywhere on this plant there are new growths coming out and they are all going to have nice leaves. And if you're watching Brian they're all going to be leaves of a nice colour this year too. <laughs> Although the twinkles didn't seem to suffer as much as some of the other oncidiums with the old light issue, like too much of it. So these are coming out a reasonable colour. And these older leaves, I mean I took two off yesterday when I watered it, just gently tug them. If they're ready to come off, they'll come off. Don't tear them. You can damage the base. Then you get an infection in there. When they're ready to drop, they will have calloused over so you don't get infections in. But long-term plans for that, it will eventually outgrow its mount. I would say it's probably got two years left on there yet. You've got, you know, that much down all along there on that side a fair bit. It was deliberately put on quite a large amount because I know it's vigorous. We're getting close to the edge on this side but still room and then up the top there we've still got room for two years. So no long-term plans for that apart from just let it do its thing. Um, what did we say? I've just done um, think five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's around, uh, there's a dozen or more new growths on that plant with an average of two spikes, yeah? Occasionally a new growth sets off late and ends up maturing as the day lengths drop back and, you know, the temperatures drop back and it won't mature quite as well as the others and it might only produce one spike. But in the main, two spikes per new growth later in the year. That's a lot, a lot of blooms. <laughs> So we don't need to worry about that, it's on cork bark, and it's got some moss, it doesn't dehydrate, it's going fine. Um, ah, here's a, here's a classic problem, it starts with a Z and usually ends up with an expression with dead in it. My last surviving zygopetalum, which I, I'm still not sure I'm going to keep it, but the only reason it's still here is that although it died a lot, <laughs> did a lot of dying but didn't quite make the whole thing the bulbs didn't shrink back like they normally do and it did push out a little new growth that is quite pathetic but it's there and some roots managed to get out somewhere down here and grow into the pot so it's got a small area of root activity not a lot long term plan for that unfortunately is that there is so little root activity, this is staying wet far too long. What happens when media stays wet too long? 
it breaks down faster, starts to turn acidic quicker, and because it's not drying out, it compounds the problem. Yeah? This is going to have to be dealt with soon, whether I like it or not. If I leave it in the stale media, the few roots it's got will fail, because it's, going to, it's just going to stay too wet for too long. There's no drying out taking place. Um, this misses a run every single time when I come to water this. So it only gets watered every other watering, which at the moment is every five or six days. And in that meantime, that water combined with that media is turning stagnant and stale. So I'm going to have to do something with it. It doesn't have a long-term plan because I don't expect it to survive. But I'd like to give it half a chance. Um, and there is one new growth coming out of the base of that little tiny new growth. Um, if I do take it out of this pot, it's going to have a fair bit of this back end taken off for a start. Um, and as I love the blooms on this so much, and I've got space nowadays, I might actually try and get a back bulb going as you get it to sprout. I don't normally bother because you're looking at a minimum of two years off blooming and normally three, and I can't be bothered. I'd rather go and buy another one. It's just a hybrid. It's nothing special. Not a special species that's incredibly rare. It's just a zygo hybrid. So replaceable. And this is the beauty of some of those types of orchids. They might not be special, and some people would frown on them. Mm, just a hybrid, is it? Mm, mm, I grow species. It will get on with it then and struggle with them all. <laughs> <laughs> These are two a penny. And if they don't do so well, you can apply the business model and dump it and get a shiny new one with lots of nice leaves and two spikes on for 15, 20 quid. Although the price is going up. So that's got a problem. Here's a problem for you. What's wrong with this plant then? And the answer is nothing. Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> this weighs a ton. It's full of small bark and moss. And this is incredibly soft clay, which is why it's getting algae all over it. And it holds a huge amount of water. Um, pour a litre water, a litre of water in this pot. I bet half of it goes in the pot. Yeah, and it holds it, so it stops the media drying out very quickly. So it stays wet quite a long time. So I have to go careful water in this one. Um, this is chucking out new growths like they're going out of fashion. Here, 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 coming up in the middle, coming out here, coming out here, round here, loads. There's new growths coming out all over the place. Are there any spikes? Are there hell? So the long-term plan on this is to stop and have a think now and again, why are you not blooming? And if I think back, I sort of think, yeah, actually this isn't one plant, it's actually several pieces, some of which were quite small and didn't have very good roots when it was potted up in this manner. But they could still be getting established. And now that they're pushing the new growths out, they will become established. So maybe we will have a bit of a mass blooming on the latest set of new growths rather than on the previous set. So I'm not worried about it, but it seems to have gone quite a long time without blooming. But it's growing like mad. Don't ever see any roots coming out of the pot, I must admit. So they're happy inside or they're, or they're dead and not growing at all. But they get replaced. All of these new growths have got roots coming out all over the place. So, strange one. At some point, it's probably going to have to come out of there because the media will eventually go. Moss and small bark. Now it's a bulbophyllum, it's supposed to stay wet, but not wet soggy and not wet rotten. So one day that's going to have to come out of there. That'll be fun. That'll be a kitchen and a set, kitchen and a half session, won't it? Right, what other things? Um, things? Really, every time I'm watering, I pick something up. If I'm in a hurry, I water it and get it back on the shelf as fast as I can. But there are times when I take time. I'll pick a plant up like this. Sticks out like a sore thumb on its shelf. Why? Because it's got a bright yellow leaf. 
have a look and see where it is. Ah, oh, it's on a really old bulb. We won't worry about that then. So, problem, crossed off. Yeah. But, what will go wrong with this? Eventually, it will have to come out of the pot. Because it will fill it. But it's not going to fill it this year. Because all the new growths are here. And that was allowed for. So they're going to be fine there. A hell of a lot of root death on the top surface of the pot. Yeah? But not down in the pot. So am I worried about that? No. Chances are the media wasn't quite high enough on the plant. Now in the wild um, it will set its own height. Yeah? Um, and it will be right for the plant. It's not going to get it wrong because it has time to do it. But when we do it, we artificially put it in a pot. We decide how high it is in the media. And if you get it a little bit too high, a lot of the roots will come out on the surface and that's not where they're supposed to be. So they'll dry off and they won't make it as well as if they'd gone in the media. If you sink it in too far, you might get some rot. There's a balance, yeah? Bottom of the pseudobulbs just in. And if in doubt, sat on the top. <laughs> you can always add a bit more later. It's difficult to take it off <laughs> once you've buried the blinking thing. Um, yeah, so uh, the growths last year were not as large as the original ones from when it came from the nursery. Is that normal? Yes. These were grown in perfect conditions. Mine were grown in next to perfect. You won't compete with the nursery conditions. It's almost impossible. And on a lot of types of orchids, you will never grow them as well as when you bought them. Out of the mass production units, the likes of Germany and Holland and places like that, you, you can't really compete with that. The automation is such that it doesn't go wrong. They don't go on holiday for a long weekend. <laughs> it just works. Oh, here's, here's a classic one. Here's a problem. And this has got a marvellous solution. This is my only Neofinesia. And this one has got, uh, still got a little bit of scale. I've done my best to get it off of here. But it's still got a, a, an odd one. But what it does have is a spike. Yay! Now, this will not grow well for me. Uh, I could spend time finding out why and try and do something about it, but what can I really do? The thing that I can do the most with in here is light. I can adjust light up and down from deep shade up to as bright as van der light. So I can do that. What else can I do? I have got some slightly cooler places, then they're not cool, cooler. And I've got some warmer places, yeah? But I can't do much with that. That's a named Neofinesia. Do you know when I was doing my notes? Um, I got to the point, because what I actually did, I know it's going to sound, oh, talk about tedious, was uh, I got my notebook in here and I had to water absolutely everything. So every single plant that I picked up I wrote its name down as I went, so that I could then go and either check that that plant was in the notes or add it if it wasn't. Um, having gone through the notes and taken out what has long since gone, because the notes reverted to 2016. That's, that's a long time ago. Lots changed since then. But I knew I had one of these, and when I got to the point to write the name down, I could not. I'm not on about the clonal name. I couldn't remember what the hell the plant was. And I'm going, it's, oh, it's a vanda. No, it's got a proper name before they reclassified it. And it's a, it's a, and it would not come. And in the end, I, I wrote down little vanda. <laughs> That's all I can think of. <laughs> anyway, I don't grow these well. I've already had to dump one. And this is a nice variegated form. It's, it's got a few manky leaves, but it's growing. So what do I do about that? How do I solve the problem? Easiest solution you can possibly imagine. Give it to someone who grows them well at the earliest opportunity. Lynn, it's on its way to you as soon as I can get it to you.
and no, you can get me a coffee. I don't want anything for it. Coffee and cake. <laughs> That's my standard price at the Wessex Orchid Society. What do you want for that then? Coffee and a piece of cake. <laughs> when we'll ever get to have a coffee and a piece of cake, I don't know, but that, that's yours as and when. Um, for you to do with as you please, if you don't want it, chuck it away. But I don't grow these well and it's a waste of a plant when somebody could grow it better. And I know who that person is and I can get at them. So uh, that's an easily solved problem, isn't it? What else have we got that's going to be a problem? Uh, this could be a problem, my hibiki, my new hibiki. The old one went down. Still not quite sure why. Ah, the noise is next door. Right, so what's the problem with this then? The problem with this is it has one, two, oh, so I'm starting in one place here, right, where there's a sticking out bit and some <laughs> two white bits of perlite, that's my marker. Right, one, two, three, four, and I haven't turned the pot yet. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, new one there. Oh, actually, that might be a spike. And then 10, 11, 12, squashed up in there. 13, there's two there. 14, 15. That's relatively new. I won't count that one. Uh, 16, where did I get to? Um, Heading up towards 20 new growths on that plant. And this here, here, is not a large cane for a hibiki. A large cane on a hibiki could be heading up 9, 10 inches easily. What on earth is that plant going to look like when all of those new growths mature? It's going to be practically off the edge of the pot in one season. That's why for me, that's in a slightly larger pot than, you know me, I like my small pots. But the problem with this plant is, it didn't have a very good root system at all. But all of these new growths are now producing new roots. Um, you can see them in various places, and they're all heading down into the pot. Now this pot stays far too wet, because from about there down to the bottom, <laughs> There's no roots. <laughs> now, I could go and make lots of holes in this so that the bottom dries out. It's new bark, perlite and charcoal. And if that has to stay wetter than it should do for the next three or four months while the roots get down in there, it won't do it any harm. Now, if the media was already 18 months old, it would do it harm and it would be breaking down. But it's not. So I'm, allow I'm allowing that to stay a bit wet. And I have to keep watering it even though it's wet because the top bit's drying, where all the new roots are. I can't let that bit dry out too much, can I? So, a strange one. So long-term plan for that is cross my fingers and think, when are you gonna start blooming? Are you gonna bloom on the canes you already had? Or have I gotta wait for all these new growths to mature? <laughs> So the only worry I've really got about this is how long it's going to be before it bursts into bloom. I suspect when it does it's going to be um, quite something. But not yet. So not a worry, just, just something a bit different. Um, a worry. Uh, there's a worry, especially as it was a lovely looking plant. My little... Um, so Strictly speaking, originally it was Sophronitis cernua, but it's now Cattleya cernua. If you have a look at the bark it's on, yeah, and that's starting to rot. This is getting a bit crumbly around the edges. It's not going to last too much longer. This is so well attached to that, serious damage would be done getting it off. It's going to have to come off eventually. And the other worry I've got is that over this side of the plant, it's already reached the edge. And a lot of the new growth seems to be coming out over here. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Grow there instead of growing out this way, won't you? I suspect there'll be some new growths up through here. But look at these leaves. Now these are really old leaves. The oldest on the plant. That's dry. It's not bugs. So what is it then? 
and tell you exactly what it is. That's going round with the sprayer with feed in it and it lives up very near the roof. Bright light, it's one of those. Yeah. And we've always said that this idea of the magnifying glass on droplets of water is cobblers. Yes and no. With clean water, or rain water, yes it's cobblers, it doesn't happen. Or every plant in the wild, when the sun comes out after a shower, would be covered in spots, wouldn't it? And it's not. You put feed in it, it's a different story altogether. What I suspect is that was droplets of water from the sprayer with feed in that dried incredibly quickly with bright light on them. It's burnt into the leaves. So highly likely I know what that is. It's not anything, not anything to start hacking the plant to pieces over, yeah? But eventually this little thing's gonna have to come off. Not this season though, I'm gonna let it grow on this season for one more and see where we go from there. But it's gonna have to come off of there eventually. Lovely thin piece of bark. I remember when I first chose it, I thought, oh, that's, you know, the plant is what's important, not the mount. But there's a problem waiting to happen. It's going to have to come off the mount. <laughs> it will have to come off eventually. There's some other problems I've got that are not my problems anymore because they're on plants that are going to go to other people as soon as I get on with it. Um, talking of which, oh, you've been sat in there about two hours now. But then you haven't been sat in there for four days. It's your first soak for four days. And this time of year that's not good. The spike on that's pushing on quite nicely now. It's going to be a nice spike. Yeah, That's the uh, tightly clustered orange one. And we had some bad leaf drop down here but what we've got now is some signs of root growth near the base of the leaves. If I can get enough roots to come out in this area it's coming off. I will separate the kiki, which has managed to damage the um, growing leaf on that. Uh, knocked it, physical damage. Not. It's, it's, been, it's been underwater for two hours, but um, it'll be dry. It'll be dry in no time at all. If in doubt, do Roger's paint, patented huff and puff <laughs> to get stuff out of crowns. Short, sharp puff, and it pushes the water out. But um, the little kiki would be rescued. If it stays as it is, the idea is that the kiki will grow up and eventually cover up this nasty looking bit. But that's two, two three years worth. <laughs> but yeah, this, this grows nicely for me. Blooms regular, twice a year. Occasionally two spikes at once. And then the other one, which I haven't even got down yet. That's, uh, this is the one that we cut off of the basket. <laughs> Rather than take it out of the basket, we cut the basket off of it. And um, it's responded by chucking roots out much farther up the plant. So we've now got roots coming right up to this point here. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a third of the way up the plant. What on earth is that noise? Oh, well, none of my business. Sounds like a long way off. Um, sounds like a high-performance car or motorbike. But this is chucking out branches on all its existing roots and we just cut the basket off, we just cut that right off. Now I could go higher and get some more old roots off if I wanted to. Now that I can see this amount of root growth in this part of the plant, but that's okay. You know, the, some of these roots are branching out now, so we'll let them do it. You know, that's what they want to do. Have we got a spike on this one yet? I don't think we have. No. Not yet. It will bloom this year at some point, but not yet. Oops. Again, it grows well. You need to put in the bucket for a while. As I said, they've, uh, the founders have had no water for some time. Because <laughs> to get this in the bucket now, I have to bury the leaves in the water as well to make sure all these higher up roots get in there. Which means I now have to fill my vander bucket up higher. For that one, just for that one. Because I, I don't want those new roots never getting wet. That would be silly, wouldn't it? Yeah. So uh, that's that. Um, we've got the, um, the problem with the Bulbophyllum Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury in the big bowl. 
is a similar problem with the Wilbur Chang, which I'm not going to get out, but nowhere near as severe, because that's in a plastic pot with lots of slits in, that was lined heavy with a moss, and then a mixture of moss and bark was put in the middle. That dries quickly. So although it's heavy on the moss, the moss isn't breaking down or showing any signs of it because it's a plastic pot. So it dries. So no problems there. Uh, yeah. Um, experiments with my live sphagnum moss um, have not been what I would call successful. And at some point it will be undone. I'll probably still use live moss, but not the live sphagnum. Um, and there's a sample of why. It compresses with constant watering. There's, there's hardly any air in that pot now. That, that moss has compressed down. So not such a good idea. Nonetheless, it's chucking out spikes all over the place again. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight. Eight spikes coming on that at the moment and signs of some root growth up the top plus reasonable new leaves coming out every now and again. New ones coming up. So another new one here. So it grows okay. So I'm not that worried about it but longer term I'm not sure it can stay in there. It's losing its air around the roots. You have to bear in mind a lot of Draculas um, in the wild. Now, they're montane forest growers where everything's just dripping wet all the time. Yeah, And when you look at the environment, it's one of those magical environments where everything hangs off the trees. You know, um, So the moss isn't just on the top of the branches or on the sides. It's hanging off in, in trails where it's so lush and green, where everything's wet like that. And Draculas are often growing in that moss. They're not on the branch. They're hanging in the moss that's hanging, if you see what I mean. And that's about as airy as you can get, isn't it? Root-wise. I don't think they take too kindly of having their roots compacted in any shape or form. They like the air around them, but they hate to dry out. That's what makes the montane forests difficult to recreate. Yeah, they have a job to do it in the house best way of creating that environment where you can actually get it spot on is in an enclosed space like a large terrarium or some sort of um, grow tent where you've got that control of high humidity and um, nothing ever dries out. Um, and you don't need high light either so it is something you can think about doing is have an indoor space dedicated where you can control that humidity, which you can't do in your lounge, can you? If you get 85-90% humidity in your lounge, your curtains and your carpet will turn green. And partners will not be happy. <laughs> if they haven't moved out already because there's no room for them because of all the orchids, they're certainly going to go if their cosy armchair starts turning green. So uh, you have to go steady. A balance is required. Right, so update on computer issues. Um, the laptop is going back. Thanks for all the advice about all the things I could have done. Uh, it's a um, horse bolt in stable door thing. There, there was a point of no return, and that point was my last ditch attempt to get that thing to fire up was to do a factory reset. So there is no recovery of files. It's wiped. They're gone. So There's no good thinking, oh, the manufacturer can do it. No, they can't. It's wiped. So there is no data to retrieve off the laptop. That was my last ditch resort. Um, plans for the future. I've already ordered a memory stick or flash drive or pen drive, whatever you want to call it. Fiddly little thing like that with a USB on the end. Um, to create a bootable drive for the desktop. Yeah. Now I don't know yet, because I, I, I gave up carrying on my research but somebody might if you know the answer definitely say so if you're guessing don't because <laughs> it's important but if you make a Windows 10 
bootable drive as a separate entity using the Microsoft creation tool or whatever, do it properly, yeah, you've got it in your hand. Will that work for any computer or will it only work for the one that made it, which would be my desktop? So do I need another one for when the laptop arrives? The chances are I will, I've just thought of the difference, there is a difference. My desktop PC is Windows 10 Pro. The laptop will be Windows 10 Home. It's not the same edition. So I will need two. Five or six quid. And that will give me something that I can plug in if, if it fails to load for any reason. Basically you plug that in and it puts a clean version of Windows on and gets it going. If it is a software issue. If your disk has failed and you have a hardware issue, you can have as many of them as you like and they ain't going to work. So there's a limit to what you can prepare for. But at least I can prepare for that. And then I have a perfectly good hard drive, um, separate hard drive. I've got that already. What I need to do is flipping use it in the future and get it into my regular... See, on the desktop, because it was a the type of machine it is and everything, I was very tidily minded. So sometime over the weekend or every week or 10 days or so, I would have a tidy up. Delete everything I didn't want, get rid of it all like that, tidy up all my YouTube stuff that's finished with, stuff to do with like the project plants, make sure they're filed away in the appropriate folders. Um, if necessary, I would run a defrag. I would run the disk tidy routine, which I do a couple of days after I've had a Windows install with an update, yeah, let it settle in, let it be happy, and then tidy up. Tidy up straight away, <laughs> and then find it doesn't work. Yeah. So I was a very tidy-minded person, but with the laptop I got lazy. So, you know, things didn't get backed up. The laptop has been packed away in its special box, and they've arranged for somebody, a courier, to come and collect it from me on Monday. So I haven't got to worry about going out and doing posts and all that sort of stuff. Also, insurance, etc. Um, I doubt if the post office will insure that because of its value, for a start. <laughs> so, somebody's going to pick it up. It will then go back to the person, I, the company I bought it from, who do actually sound like they make and sell their own computers. So they have some skills. They're not just retail. Yeah, there is a difference. Especially when you get to the more complex kit. Um, so they are going to do some testing on it. They can't start taking it apart because they will then invalidate the warranty and when they try and use the warranty, which is an arrangement they have with the manufacturer, the manufacturer will say, bog off, you've played with it. Yeah? So they will test it. They will probably get one of those little <laughs> boot drive things and poke it in and see if it will load up. You know, And if they get it to load up and it all works okay, then they'll send it back to me, I suspect. And it won't have to go back to the manufacturers. If it does have to go back to the manufacturers, they've said a minimum of 28 days. That's on top of their time. So, <laughs> what is it? And she said, the answer to everything, including how long your laptop will be away, is the same answer as the answer to life, the universe and things. It's 42. And in this case, that's not a bad guess. 42. They said about... 10 to 12 days, and then 28 days for the manufacturer, I reckon that's about 42 days, so you were right. Um, anyway, so that's, the, that's what's going on with that. My notes are now back up and running, everything's keyed in. Thank you to Zayna. Um, I'm not sure I want to know how you did that, but Zayna sent me an email with an attachment, which was an XLS spreadsheet of my notes, or a partial um, first section of my notes, which is genus, plant, species or hybrid name, and a couple of other little, little bits and pieces, the first left-hand section of my notes. As of December last year, I don't want to know how you got that, because I don't remember ever sending my spreadsheet to anybody as a spreadsheet, maybe I did, which means the only place that ever existed was in a video, you know, where I Show, I've shown my notes in a video before now and said, you know, these are the headings and this is the sort of thing I do. And at some point I would have probably said, and I do keep some extra data at the end of my notes and I'd have scrolled through. 
So at some point, the entirety of those notes would have been in a video. Uh, I can't imagine there is a way of extracting video data into a spreadsheet. If there is, that's pretty damn clever. Which implies you typed it in. Now I know this lockdown is boring, but that's pushing it. <laughs> anyway, it did turn out to be quite helpful because I've got faded tags in here, plants with no tags. Um, so process of elimination, everything that I could identify I'd already done. And then from December, I found the names of plants and I could just cut the cell out and paste them in my notes. So I didn't have to type that in, that was good. Of all the things that I couldn't identify. And that got me back to as of December. And then all I had to key in on top of that was the new plants I've had since then. And that's not many. And they're fresh in my mind. So my notes are back up and running in a very limited form. And I think that's how they're going to stay. I've got a column that identifies the project plants, just a colour. It doesn't need any words, it's just a colour. I've marked the plants that are to go to other people. So those are marked. Um, so those are just colour bars. Um, they're easy. And then I've got the genus. I've got the hybrid or species name. And then I've tried to recreate as best I can, which I will update as time goes on, with the um, bloomed status, yeah, which is blank in the main. That data was lost. But if it's in bloom at the moment, I've put that data in. Um, then I've also got the where I got it from. Because I've recreated my notes from as of 2016, a lot of my plants I owned in 2016. So who and where I got them from was still there. I was surprised how much of that there was. So that's still there where available. Where it would be blank and I know I've keyed that in, otherwise it's just unknown. And then repotted or put on its mount, in the main that's unknown because that data was lost. And then there's a, a little section on the end for notes, anything special about that plant. And that's it. I've taken out all the rest. All the other columns I'm not bothering with because they never got updated and I didn't use them. So it seems silly maintaining something that is of little or no use. So it's a much more um, condensed version now. And um, I'm pleased that I managed to get it back in that form. Folder I've lost that is... Oh, this, I can't even remember exactly what is in it, but it's things like, um, like my destruction notice for the Saab. If ever there's an issue with that car, you know, I can prove that somebody took it away from me on this date. Uh, things like that have gone. Um, no claims bonus for my insurance from the previous insurer. Various things that I've had as email attachments that have been put in a folder for safekeeping. <laughs> and then the folder didn't get backed up. Duh! Um, my logos were in there that um, Pix's other half did for me. Um, professionally, you know, the, the little Rogers Orchid circle in the bottom right hand corner of my videos, those are lost. I don't know whether they're still lying around on somebody else's PC and could be mailed again. But um, yeah, they, I mean, that was a big favour getting those done for me. Um, but they're gone. Um, I thought they were in a folder on the hard drive, but they're not. So there's quite a lot of things in what I call general stuff. That lot's gone. And that wasn't backed up at all. And then my Bournemouth Orchid Society folder that's got all my stuff to do with the magazine. A lot of that I've still got as a backup that was taken when I moved everything from the desktop to the laptop. I left that one there, luckily. So I've still got a lot of that stuff. But we shall see. Um, the competitions for this, yeah. The um, British Orchid Council's virtual um, competition, which is in place of the Malvern International Show. Um, it got there to the competition. It's, it's in the appropriate section, so it's, it's made it and got lost in the post. <laughs> um, I don't know when they're going to issue the results, but I think they had, had it in mind. The cutoff was last Sunday, so they've had a week. It's Sunday again today. The Malvern Show would have finished 
you know, five o'clock this afternoon had it taken place. Um, I would imagine the results of the judging are going to be out very soon, um, if not later today, possibly, I don't know. Um, so we should find out about that. And the results of it in the Bournemouth Orchid Society, we're not going to know till the last Friday of the month, which I think is about the 26th, 27th, something like that. So we've got quite a wait for that. They haven't even got to the cut-off date yet. <laughs> I got in early. And, um, so we shall see. So... Uh, Laptops in progress. <clears throat> Quite honestly, once it's picked up tomorrow and the courier drives up the road with it, I won't think any more of it until such time as I hear something back, like we've tested it and decided to send it to the manufacturer, or we've tested it and we've fixed it and we'll be sending it back to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm back to where I was before I got the laptop. I've got the desktop. It's set up as best as I can, with as much recovered as possible. And um, <laughs> later on today, once I've got this video done and out of the way, I'm actually, although I've just recreated my notes and things like that, guess what I'm going to do later on today on my external hard drive? Yeah, back it up. I've just spent well over, well, sections of two days getting that file back in order. <laughs> We're not going to lose it again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I'll start a regular routine of uh, backing things up. Um, I did have a look at cloud um, issues. I personally wouldn't use the Google version. I don't trust them with my data quality. I don't trust them farther than I can chuck them. They're, in my mind, whether it's true or not, they're up to no good with people's data. It's just the way it's it's set in my mind now, and I can't undo it. So... But um, there's OneDrive, the Microsoft option that sort of comes with your software, basically. You don't get much, though. Um, it might sound a lot. I think you get five gigabytes free. Well, as soon as you start getting into video files, that's gone. This video, in its raw state, will probably be six or seven gigabytes. Yeah? That will be the what comes off the camera. And then it's got to be played with and dealt with, yeah? So as soon as you start getting into video files, you, you, your space just gets gobbled up. But most of the time I don't need to back up video files. Once I've created the video and it's actually loaded onto YouTube, it's YouTube stuff. So everything that I use to create it is no longer required, so they can be tidied. But things like my, um, my pop-ups or my pictures, um, you know, I've lost some photos. Um, and those plants are now not in bloom anymore, <laughs> so I have to wait a year. Um, yeah, so I lost some photos. But again, things like that. That's a physical file um, of photos. They're of a reduced size to cut down the volume, but I suspect that file, that would probably head up towards that 5 gig, just that file on its own. There's a lot of photos in there. So, we will try doing something, but initial point of call is my external hard drive, perfectly acceptable and more than enough space for the whole flipping computer could back up on that. So we will see what we can do. And we will create a little boot stick, um, boot flash drive for the desktop, um, for that version of Windows. Once I get the laptop back, we'll do the same for that. For five or six quid to get something that you can poke in, no guarantee that's going to work, but if you haven't got it, it's not going to work. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Anyway, I've been gassing on plenty long enough. I hate to think how long this is, but you haven't had a video for a while, so uh, yeah. So long I've forgotten what I've got to do next now. What I've got to do next. Oh, yeah, thanks for dropping by and turn it off. <laughs> See you next time. Bye for now.